Well, I think part of the issue, I, mean, I live way in the mountains and I have this view that is spacious. I think part of stillness is finding that sense of openness, open awareness of spaciousness. And so many people that live in the city never get to experience, I mean, now more and more with the computers and here we are. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I know, I know, I know. But with the, you're, you're so right because we feel like really compressed, don't we, inside ourselves. And the Qigong gives us a sense of like expansion or ease on the inside because we've let go of a lot of the tension through the grounding exercises and the connection with the breath. So there is more space for the fresh vitality to come in. Hello, welcome into Chi Time, your conscious living chill out show with me, Clara Apollo. And on this episode, I'm delighted to have Sharon Rose, the filmmaker, choreographer, and author, dancer, artist, uh, extraordinary woman. Uh, she's created the Quantum Chi movie and set of documentaries, and she's coming in to give us an update as to how it's going in the Quantum Chi camp. So welcome back to Chi Time, wonderful Sharon Rose. Mm, as always, it's such a delight to be with you, Clara. Oh, I know. And I know that you're on the other side of the ocean, but we can connect up in here. And it's a magical thing, isn't it? Oh, yes. It's, I'm in the Rocky, way up in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, and it's snowing. <laughs> it's snowing. Oh, my goodness. So the winter is here. And this is where, you know, the, the energy of the year is starting to condense. Oh, well, it was not starting to. It really is coming in through the metal element into the water element. So that we're coming into this reflective time, but also into that time of deep, deep nourishment that the energy of the year is got its bounty to support us here. And, and I love that, that quality of like condensing into the purest, most exquisite nuggets of delicious chi. Uh, <laughs> and we're here to um, talk about the quantum chi movie. So how has it been going over there in the, editing land oh well, the editing it's going so well it's so beautiful we're we're finishing up our work on episode two which is called the way and the warrior from subtle arts to martial arts and so it begins where we're talking about martial arts so wushu and tai chi and the concept of flow and then we go deep deep, deep, deep into protective chi. And which is something in this chaotic world we're living in right now, everywhere. Just mm. look, <laughs> turn on the TV, not that, <laughs> and just look, you see protests everywhere. You see people are so divided in this country and it's, it's so sad, it's so disturbing. And I think for me, I feel so deeply like, I'm sure many of the people watching this, you know, especially if you're a Qigong practitioner, uh, you just can feel this chaos going on and this anger coming out. And it's so opposed to what the Tao is really teaching us. So just watching all of this really inspires me. I mean, it hurts me, but it also inspires me to keep going with this film. And so in this episode, we really bring in animation at a level that we haven't before. And so embedded in the uh, documentary style, we have little moments now of like where Master Li Junfeng is teaching about meditation. And you see, you know, just little, little meditation he gives you so you can feel it. And as he starts, we go into an animation where he goes off into the universe. Mm -hmm. And then our dear Ken Cohen later is talking about standing meditation because we're talking about protection. And so we have a little animation where he's teaching that as well. Mm -hmm. And then the really exciting part, which is kind of a foreshadowing of what we're doing in episode five. Episode five is going to be, it's called uh, Healing the Emotional Body. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be talking about, in that one, the six healing sounds, the relationship between the emotions and the organs. 
it is work. so rich isn't it so for people that don't know that much about qigong they kind of think it's a strange word you know qi and gong where it's energy cultivation arts and all of us are made up of this vital energy and and it gets sort of used up as we get stressed or as we get ill and tired and everything and as you were saying like dealing with the chaos of the world but the call now i think you said that is it the Tao playing well the Tao plays its yin yang game with us so as we're noticing the difficulties and the chaos and the oh the traumas there's the calling to that to the truth that's inside all of us to work with the energy so purely and I don't know about you, but when you say Qigong to people and they look a little bit blank, do you say it's like Tai Chi? Yeah, exactly. So I, then I say, well, have you heard of Tai Chi? Yeah. Oh, yes. Have you exactly. heard of martial arts? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I watch, you know. Yeah. Um, but but the, and so and so and so and so. And so and is this part of what the Quantum Chi movie is going to help explain how Qigong actually underpins Tai Chi and all the martial arts? Well, that's the premise, really, uh, among other things, of episode two, that we talk about these different teachings. The, what is Tai Chi? I mean, it's, it's not like we could go on what is Tai Chi for years, but, you know, <laughs> we're giving an intro. So, you know, what is Wushu and what is Tai Chi and how really meditation and, and Qigong are foundational practices so for both of these, I mean, I think it's a foundational practice for any kind of energy arts. I completely it, agree. It and really life. <laughs> an awareness of your own energy that I've never seen anywhere else. Because, I mean, I've heard it in the Tibetan tradition, you know, but not at the level of putting together the movement and the sound and the grace and the consciousness. Yeah, yeah. So we're talking about not only our physical body, but our emotions and our thoughts and the relationship between our thoughts with our emotions, the relationship between our emotions and thoughts with our physical body and the traumas and, mm. and also wonderful things that we go through. It, the thing about uh, having been a yoga practitioner forever, uh, it really trained me in alignment. And yes, I've learned about the chakras and uh, believe me, a lot. But there is something about qigong and the, uh, the gathering of qi, learning how to bring qi into different parts of your body the meditative aspect, the movement aspect, all of these things, they are at a level that I haven't seen anywhere else. And, and they bring you a level of self-empowerment. You know, mm. in the West, yes, our medical establishment is incredible at things like surgery, yeah. right? That, that we have some great <laughs> techniques that we've developed in the West, but What's not happening, and I see this more and more, is that someone will come to a doctor's office and immediately they just want to either give them a pill that, that's supposed to take away their symptoms, which probably gives them more symptoms. Mm -hmm. They're just not looking at the whole person. They're, they're just looking at the symptoms. And they're not even looking at so much the causes of the symptoms. So when you go to a, a traditional Chinese medicine doctor, and so many of them are also Qigong practitioners, so that they have this teaching that they can give you to take home. And then you can do wonderful things that will help you on a preventative level. Exactly. That was a point I was going to make. Preventative healthcare. So what is it? Something like 75 to 80 plus percent of all disorders these days are preventable if you know how to do it. And when I first got into Qigong, it was actually to help the, um, relieve the symptoms of repetitive strain injury that I got from being a costume designer. 
But what I loved as I learned that it was that I was doing something for myself. It was self-empowering to know that I could do an exercise form that was actually going to help me get better. But at the same time, it taught me a lot about my energy that I had no idea about. I mean, I didn't know that I was bequeathed a certain amount of jing essence from my life from the combination of my parents. And I didn't know that like, if I burnt out too many times, that would really do me in. That would, you know, it's like, why wasn't I told this? Because we're not taught this at schools or, or in our culture. There was all this pushing. Where is that integrity of how to take care of yourself as, a, as an energy being, as well as a physical being? And as you're saying, it's all these different layers, this holistic view of who we really are now that is becoming so much clearer to so many more people. and. Qigong taught me mindfulness. It, it taught me to be in the moment and notice it. And it took me away from the traumas, traumas and the worries because you know that everybody's got stuff going on. How do we get time away from it that's not alcohol, drugs, or you know, other escaping um, mechanisms? We come into meditation where there's lots of room for like all sides of your personality to come in. But when you, when you work it with the Qigong, it gives you specific intentions to work with that are physical ideas of how you're moving tiny mo mo motions within bigger ones, but also where the breath is. And in, a, and in a, a moment, you're entranced, aren't you, by how that makes you feel to be with yourself in a much broader perspective of experience. Magical. Well, it gives us so many tools that help us deal with what we're going through these days. That's it. I, I've talked to many, many people, women in particular, who for some reason these days are waking up in the middle of the night yeah. with anxiety. And there are really wonderful breathing techniques in Qigong. Yeah. Exactly. And I, 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 and I, I know what you mean about this waking up in the middle of the night is happening to a lot of us. But you know what I wonder is because it's so chaotic at the moment that in the middle of the night, that's when everything's calm and you can come into your practice. So I was learning this when I was um, doing Reiki training would be like I'd wake up in the middle of the night thinking, well, great opportunity to practice my self-care then, isn't it? So I turned it on its head as opposed to, oh, no, I should be asleep. Oh, I'm anxious and I'm worried. It's like, oh, it's an opportunity for me to look at what I need to do for myself. And how often do we get that in this busy world of being pulled here and pulled there? Where do we get time to be called into taking care of ourselves? And really thinking about the nature of our minds and how our minds are being affected by the fear and anxiety and we're not good enough that's being constantly projected on us. So Qigong really provides teachings about uh, what my dear friend John Milton, who's uh, been a Qigong teacher and practitioner for many, many years. And also he's been, I, I think he coined the term environmentalism. And so, okay. yeah, which is, oh, that's a subject I want to talk about. Yeah. But he refers to, uh, inner nature, outer nature, and true nature. So if we just begin to look, these teachings will give us practices that help us to understand the nature of our thoughts and how, how much of these thoughts are really our true nature. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking, um, one of the, I think in the... Um, both in the, in the Taoist and the Buddhist texts, they talk about a symbol as the mirror um, and the mirror and the reflections. Mm -hmm. And that we, our true nature is like the mirror, our true essence, uh, some would call it our divine essence, is the mirror that has always been pure. And as we come into this reality, you know, we get caught up in all the karma and all the, what we would call reflections. And how do we see those reflections as just mere reflections and stand in the center of the mirror. And our dear Ken Cohen in episode two, you know, he really talks about this concept of grounding. A lot of them do, it's not yeah, just him. Yeah. This concept of really grounding and centering and being in that calm, clear 
center where these disparate thoughts that are driving us out of our minds, literally, um, are just allowed to arise and dissolve. Mm. And, and yeah. see them for what they really are. They're just yes. like pr projections on the, on, the, uh, on the screen sort of thing. But when you, because all of us have this piece at our center and, and a lot of us are hearing this call to this stillness now. And there's so many levels and layers of stuff on top of it. And there's a fear around what happens if, I'm come, if I get into stillness, what's gonna happen? But within that stillness, as you know, is the connection into the quantum field, to the field of all possibilities. So it's, stillness is the way in. Stillness isn't, I mean, there's a fear around being still because that linking to being dead, you know, will be still, but it's a different kind of stillness. There's a quality to, the, to it that's expansive, but can't, it can't be rushed after, it can't be you know, chased. You have to know that it's already there within you and, and, and let yourself drop in to meet it. Well, I think part of the issue, I, mean, I live way in the mountains and I have this view that is spacious. Oh, I think yeah. part of stillness is finding that sense of openness, open awareness of spaciousness. And so many people that live in the city never get to experience. I mean, now more and more with the computers, and here we yeah, are. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, you know. I know, I know, I know. But with the, you're, you're so right, because we feel like really compressed, don't we, inside yes. ourselves. And the Qigong gives us a sense of like expansion or ease on the inside, because we've let go of a lot of the tension through the grounding exercises and the connection with the breath. So there is more space for the fresh vitality to come in. But that concept of space, mm, it's an interesting one because around us, we are surrounded by space, but we don't notice it because it's almost so obvious. And within that, you know, if we're surrounded by space, then when we breathe, surely we're breathing some of that space in. So we've got the potential for feeling more spaciousness just with that thought of, well, I'm actually always in touch with space. I just hadn't realized it. That's true. That's true. That's very true. So that's what, so that's what I love about Qigong is it gives you these sort of salient truths that you might not have noticed before. And when I was doing my training, I was just aharing it all over the place. Like, oh yeah, I hadn't noticed that obviousness before. And um, I've got a lovely quote from John Milton actually here from your lovely little um, episode two trailer where he says that if you love nature and, and your heart is open to the rest of life, then all nature flows through you and supports you and the chi supports you. So that call to nature, not the call of nature, the call to nature is huge within us all. It's trying to well, help. that brings me to another topic that's related that I would like to bring up and that it has to do with, the, with climate change. And so many of us, the world is now focused on the outer climate, which is a good thing. But what about the inner climate? What about the world of energy and emotions? I feel, and that's why I'm working so hard on quantum chi, because we're actually going to be showing the effect of emotions on other people. And, and I feel that if we could teach people, and that's what Qigong does so beautifully, to understand the effect and to visualize the effect. When you're getting angry, your field is like expanding and getting red and getting jagged and getting, and then, you know, the person you're yelling out at, they might be standing up to, you know, trying to do this kind of, you know, put up a wall to you, or they could be cowering and, and the angry person is like, sending out these kind of strange um, energetic cords to try to suck energy. I think that if we saw that, mm -hmm. we were able to understand that energetic climate yes. and really learn to calm that energetic climate, which is the essence of the Tao, it then is, the is. outer climate would also change. We I would can... have much more, we'd have open hearts, we'd have more reverence, for nature and the beings of nature and 
start thinking about being blissful and joyful and in touch and in love with life. This is such a good point, Sharon. Sharon Rose is here with us on Chi Time. She's cre creating the incredible series of uh, Qigong movies, documentaries called Quantum Chi. And um, yeah, that self-responsibility that if you want to change the world, the only thing you can really change is yourself. And the call within you to be true is louder than you think, even though we talk about the subtleness of Qigong, the power within the subtleness, that if you listen, you can hear your truth. That's why I think stillness and being in nature is so important to undistractionize ourselves, made up, made up word, but you know what I mean, stepping away from all the busyness because that's stopping us from connecting in with who we truly are. And so coming into this heartfelt practice and taking care. And I love the idea that, the idea that you're using these visual um, illustrations to show that because we are such a visual we're in such a visual world that we kind of need that. We need to see, oh, so if I'm being angry and red and jagged, that is that will stick with somebody more because they'll have seen a vision on it of a visual of it, as opposed to just us talking about it, although you can feel it. Well, we also have a moment because we're talking also clearly about healing. Oh, absolutely. And so we have we're working on an animation right now that has Lee Holden and his daughter where he's sending healing chi into her body, right? And that is, that's very lovely. So we want to show people, you know, we talk about chi, 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 but you know, it's invisible unless you call it plasma energy. There's lots of things that we could say. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people now are talking about plasma oh, wow. and yeah, plasma as chi, uh, plasma as being the force, you know, the, mechanism by which we're all created we're all made of plasma this is the latest it's thing. a weird it's a weird use of the word because as an ex-nurse plasma is clearly part of the blood you know so it's like a it's a strange word but i think you know with chi like you say it's invisible so it's like we've got to like prove it's there it's like well hello the air is invisible but we use it all the time and the chi is a component of the air or it can exist in the air and that's why it's great with with the Qigong and with this amazing movie that you've produced is that you give examples for people to actually practice and experience the Qi for themselves and then they get it. Well, what I really love that we haven't mentioned is that Qigong, as Lee Holden would say, is for everyone. Absolutely. So I've been on a lot of shows lately, you know, healing shows. So I'm talking about the fact, even if you were bedridden, you could still do Qigong and it would, it would enliven you because it gives you something to do just instead of lying there watching TV and being like. <sighs> really, but this is all about your mind as well. Isn't it like a Lou Reed, even on, on his deathbed, was running the Tai Chi form in his mind? You know, exactly. it, it, and that's what you could do at three in the morning. You could run a very simple form in your mind and that brings a connection with your chi and, it, and it's that you start that internal that self-mastery so any, anyone can do it but you've got to want to yeah yeah well you also mentioned something that that made me think about intuition and creativity so we're starting the uh, what we call the rough cut you know where you take four hours of interviews and you uh, distill them to like 40 minutes. Wow, what an art that is, Sharon. I wouldn't want that job. <laughs> it's quite challenging, yeah. but it's on the chi matrix. And so that's where we're starting to go even deeper into, you know, the invisible aspects of our being. Mm. But that are, you know, it's the chi matrix is a, this map for us of our energy body. And so in that, you know, we're talking about the three Dantians, the three elixir fields, the three fields of medicine, right? And when you get up to the third eye, right, the, the um, upper Dantian, mm. that is the doorway, like the third eye in the Hindu tradition or other traditions, 
to our intuitive abilities, our clairaudience, our clairvoyance. We're all capable of this. And once, you know, we can bring this chi, you know, we start with our lower dantian, you know this very well, <laughs> our grounding. And then we get, move up to the heart. So we have, a, uh, Qigong teaches us the means to have a pure and open heart. And then we go up to the upper dantian, where we're going to be opening to the quantum. That's what I would say. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I'm very excited also, update on quantum chi. Yeah, update on yeah. quantum chi, go. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have an episode called quantum chi in which we're going to be talking with quantum physicists and Qigong masters, uh, particularly the Qigong side, I would say Ming Tong Gu has incredible knowledge of quantum. So does Amalia Weiching and Roger Yonka. So, but we're excited in that um, Amit Goswami, who uh, is a quantum physicist who was featured in What the Bleep has now agreed to be interviewed for the series. And so that's very exciting. And we're going to be, you know, we have the word out to other quantum physicists so that we can really have a clear discussion mm. of this relationship between Qigong and our consciousness mm. and the quantum field. Yes, yes. So I was going to ask you, why did you call it quantum chi? <laughs> well, I, it came in a dream, actually. It's like, what am I going to call this? What am I going to call this? And uh, then the words quantum chi came to me. See, that's what happens when you Intuition, start to Intuition, absolutely. Right? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's open. Up here, I mean, think of DNA, right? Didn't they? That came in through a dream. That mm -hmm. whole... This, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, I mean, I've, it's been interesting because I've had conversations with, you know, people tend to, um, they'll study something for a very long time and then their whole personality becomes wrapped around a kind of rigid version of it. Mm. I mean, to me, Qigong helps you open to all the potentials of who you are and all the possibilities of consciousness, even in like what they call quantum entanglement, you know, mm -hmm. the effect of one thing on another. Uh, and so I thought, and it's also something I really would like to learn about personally, you know, when I do <laughs> these. Yeah, exactly. It's what we want to learn films. about. So like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I know, only... we did a film, we did a film uh, called infinity, the ultimate trip. Um, journey, let's see, what was it, Journey Through Death or something like that. And we interviewed all these well-known experts on death and the afterlife. So I learned a tremendous amount about that. Mm -hmm. And we did one on 2012. And so I, I interviewed all the big 2012 researchers. So, but this one, Qigong, mm -hmm. it has just grabbed me. I, mostly, I think because I've been a dancer all my life. So movement has been the base of everything, but also I've worked with emotions. Uh, my book, Path of the Priestess, which was uh, written for women. Oh, men like it too at times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tells them about women. Yeah. But uh, that book was really a lot. I have three chapters on how to transmute your emotions, your negative emotions into the enlightened emotivity of the divine feminine uh, from all different traditions. Ah, oh, fascinating. So, so the emotional aspect of it is something, because I grew up incredibly emotional just from when I came in. I mean, and I had some trauma as a child and, you know, trauma leads to a disconnect mm -hmm. and it also can lead to a lot of excessive emotivity. Fortunately, mm -hmm. my mother <laughs> put me into dance and theater and singing, and right. there was a place yes. where I could really um, express express it. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And it's safe. And so, mm -hmm. at this point, finding qigong, and then I've studied this in many, many traditions of healing and um, energy arts mm -hmm. throughout all these years. So, finding qigong 
for me, it was just like, I've now found the quintessential practice that pulls together so much of what I've been learning all my life. And even in the filmmaking, you know, here I was filming dance for years and years. That was my, you know, music videos and then world music videos and productions in which I had video going and all this kind mm -hmm, of stuff mm -hmm. for years. But so now, you know, being able to film, especially with those drones oh, yeah, in fantastic. nature, all these gorgeous oh, Qigong, Tai Chi and Wushu mm -hmm. masters, mm -hmm. um, it, all of the training I had all those years is just being channeled right into this series. Oh, I so hear you here. And the amount of people that say to me that been through, you know, coming to the, the trainings that I offer and that have had experience with yoga or dance, meditation, Tai Chi, they say they, they come into Qigong and they're like, oh, this is the missing piece. This is the bit of the jigsaw that's going to unify all the other bits. And it's like, yes, it's a connector. She connects us all, you know, and, and that's one of the beauties of it as well, that, that we're all connected through our life force en energy and our hearts and our, and our movement and our, and our breath. And, our, you know, I just think it's a magical gift to the world. And I, and I really feel like it's the exercise form that's going to really seriously help us through these next few years of transition and beyond because it helps you to self-empower and it gives you a possibility of easing up all the stresses and strains inside of you um, and and as you say gives you access to your higher nature or your more broader expanded nature so that you can make changes on the inside that can then happen externally so this is proper magic and i would love to share it with more and more people which is why i'm so behind this movie because this is what you're doing you're getting it out to a, a mainstream audience so that they can make sense of it and think I, I could try that because as you said it's for everyone and some of it's incredibly simple it doesn't have to be you know the cosmic uh, experience that we've had immediately it can just be how are you standing and and where do you f feel balanced and you know how you can tap tension out of your system and and how you can relax your belly when you're breathing and that just changes so much you know it gives you so much consciousness yeah of your body you know mm. we're we're a society that just especially in the west we're just caught up in do 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 we have to do constantly we have to be you know thinking about how we're going to um make the net have the next wonderful financial thing happen and how we can achieve power and all kinds of things like this where if we sit in what we talked about before the silence in the sense of stillness in the sense of spaciousness you know qigong always talks about uh, stillness in movement movement in stillness it does indeed it does and when I am moving in the Qigong, well, and also in dance, I, I now go to this wonderful African dance class every week that is taught by a Qigong teacher. Brilliant. <laughs> so it's kind it. of this blending. It's this like grace of Qigong in, with the African rhythms. And it's very powerful. And I'm finding actually uh, that more and more teachers of different, you know, from yoga to African dance to yeah. ballet, to martial arts are bringing in qigong they are that's connecting again i know i wanted to ask you something about the um what you feel is the connection between the chakras and the dantians this is a bit of a conversation that i like to have with myself about it and um <laughs> and i just wondered what your thoughts were about the similarities or the differences well it's interesting because one of the reasons the, the things that attracted me to qigong was the fact that there were only three. <laughs> three I mean, there's lots of meridians, right? Yeah. There's lots of meridians, but there's three basic power centers. And I thought that this would be the perfect tradition with the three to bring to mm -hmm. the mainstream people because it's much easier mm -hmm. than figuring out seven or 12 or people go on to many, many chakras, right? Mm -hmm. And and those centers, yes, there's clearly a parallel, right? So the 
you know, the lower, um, lower Dantian to me would be really connected with the first and second. Yes, 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 yes. Right. And then the middle, of course, would be connected to uh, the solar plexus and the heart. Yes. And then the upper really is connected to the throat, the third eye and the crown. I, I agree. It encompasses all of them. But when you look at the, the chakras being like wheels of energy um, and the colors associated and then the endocrine organs as well, that they've, they definitely are a connection, maybe even between the layers of the aura and each of the, the chakras. Oh, yeah. yes. yes. Um, well, that's, if you bring that up, that's one of the things that we're going to be bringing forth. Okay. What the auras look like. That's... <laughs> You know, that's what I'm talking about in terms yeah. of, you know, the energetic climate change. We're going to be showing how these emotions actually affect your auric field. Yes, the different levels and layers of it, because you may be able to sense it, but um, some people can see it. And be like, oh, can you see the, uh, your aura? And they're like, oh, magical. We're like, well, let's see what, you know, how you can depict that. But the point that I was wanted to just bring up here is that the Dantien's, are not structured like chakras. They're, they're fields of elixir that um, extend according to how much life force energy you have in you. Um, and so they exist co-spatially with the chakras. So they absolutely have a, have a, have a com conversation and a connection and an integration. And I would, I would just love to like, study this a bit more as to how the dantians and the chakras can work and inform and each other as well as the people that are in them because if we're looking at the hindu transit tradition with the chakras and the yoga and we're looking at the chinese tradition with the dan dantians how can we get this to make sense because our minds are trying to make sense of it but um i just thought that was a fascinating consideration yes a lot of the teachers that i interview actually bring in the correspondences between them oh great great yes, yes they love to you know they, they they'll say you know oh your upper dantian or your you know third eye chakra and etc like that yeah and that's the center of the chakras right the center of the wheel has got to be the center of the dantian isn't it aren't they coming from the same place aren't of they? course they're attached to the um well oh, you'd either, either call it the, the central channel yeah, in the, in the Tibetan Indo-Tibetan tradition, it's called the central channel. Yeah, or the central meridian. Yeah, the Chiang Mai. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So they have got a point of connection at the very center. And what we were talking about earlier, stillness at your core, stillness at your center, that is calling you in. That's an essential part of your energetic makeup. That's 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 where to go to to land home and to resource and to really be you. You know. Well, and also we're talking about, uh, we, in episode two and then again in episode five, we're talking about the heart and the heart field. Yes. And how, you know, bringing, particularly when you think of bringing the chi, like a vortex, you think of a vortex yeah. of energy above your head, a spiral vortex, bringing the chi into the central meridian and also at the same time from the earth, the same thing, the spiral vortex, bringing the chi up and then, you know, having it center in the heart. And then as a healer myself, you know, I will feel that when I'm there to do some work with someone, I'll feel that coming in from the earth and sky and then into my heart and then pouring down through my arms into Lagong points, right? To my hands, right? right? And then... You know, it's coming through and also uh, feeling opening to this larger reality of the quantum, really. And to so many um, aspects of healing where at times I actually can see and feel the person's, I guess you would call them maybe spirit guides or energies mm -hmm. that are there mm -hmm. to assist. And so it's not only, you know, a connecting, but it's calling in, you know, many, many layers of even what we would call the Akashic field. Mm -hmm. And 
keeping that grounded aligned thing so that one can really also at the same time have the detached clear centered feeling in oneself as the healer mm -hmm. so that the person's entire system at, you know not only their physical but their emotional and mental opens up and you can start to assist them in bringing everything back into balance Oh, I can so feel this. And I was going to ask you to give us an example of something. And you just did. It was beautiful. I love it. Thank you, Sharon. Well, um, let's continue this conversation in another show because we're running out of time here on Chi Time. And there's always more to talk about with this. So how can people find out more about the Quantum Chi movie and what you're doing in there? Okay. Go to the website quantumchimovie.com, Q-U-A-N-T-U-M-Q-I movie.com. Uh, or you could go to our Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash quantumchi. I'm also very active on LinkedIn. Very, LinkedIn's been amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been reaching out actually uh, to, you know, sales agents for films. Like I'm going to a level... Uh, that I haven't dealt with before with this movie. Wow. Yeah. Um, and my dream, of course, uh, is to help it become, Qigong become as popular as yoga. And so I'm, I've interviewed about 30 masters for this, and I, I hope to interview more. I'm in a fundraising phase. Um, we have an Indiegogo that will last, that ends on the 30th, but we have another, um, ongoing nonprofit from the heart productions. Uh, you can find out about any of this on our website that will keep going so that we can raise money. You know, to be an independent filmmaker is not easy. I've taken lots of jobs just to pay the editor because I believe in this. I really believe in this so much. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you go to like a Amazon or something, they want to take it over. They want to tell you what to do. So it's, yeah, I'm doing my best to bring it forth with all of your help uh, in the highest, clearest, most beautiful, artistic way. This documentary, if you've seen the trailers, oh, they don't look like other documentaries. They do not. There's such an exquisiteness to them. The purity of your heart and soul is coming through this, Sharon. And I, I thank you from the breadth of my soul and heart too. Oh, and um, we are stepping into Thanksgiving in America. Have you got a word to say about that before we go? Well, I'm very excited because I'm going to be seeing my entire family. <laughs> and uh, my mother is going on 93, and then I'm the next. And now we, this year we have five new babies that have come in. I've become a grandmother finally. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thrilled and they all are asking my sisters my mother it's like please you know oh, my my lower back is hurting can you give me some exercises my mother has arthritis in her knees give me a routine so that just feels so good that I have these tools that I can give to any age right there's something in Qigong for everyone that will help them so it's going to be a really exciting and fun Thanksgiving. And, you know, to all of you Americans who are, will be celebrating it, you know, really it's time to give thanks for, you know, whatever all the chaos that we live in a really special country um, that gives us a lot of freedom. And I'm very grateful for what U.S. government, they helped me go to India and live in India and, you know, supported my artistic endeavors. So I'm very grateful and I'm just grateful to you, Clara, and to all of the Qigong masters and to all of you out there who, you know, are part now of this beautiful movement of Qigong to bring this joy, this peace, this harmony to us all. Lovely. Sharon, thank you so much. And in your words and in mine also, may the chi be with you. Be with you. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. <laughs>